I'd say Mark IV GLI uh, 1.8 turbo. These were probably the nicest factory, in my opinion, Mark IVs that came out. The 337 or the 20th anniversary was really nice as well, but this color with the chrome trim, it's a really nice vehicle. It's got the GLI seats and all that stuff. Clay will probably take some footage of it. Yeah, full black interior, headliner, yeah. all that cool stuff. Yeah, so. so it had the nicest of the Mark IV stuff, aside from the R32, of course. I'd agree with that. Yeah. This one's getting quite a bit of good gear on it. Um, I'm going to pull the engine apart, do valves, valve springs, do connecting rods, turbo upgrade, a whole bunch of stuff. So we're probably going to do this video in like three parts. This one, we're going to dyno it just to, as a baseline, see what it makes for power now uh, with the current mods. And um, we'll probably do a video of the engine build and some of the turbo gear going on. And then one video probably at the end um, with it on the dyno for the last time, see what we can get out of it. It's engine wise, it's stock. It does have a chip tune. I think this one's running Unitronic. It would be considered their like stage two. So um, it does have an upgraded downpipe and an intake. I think the diverter valve has been changed. I think Unitronic Stage 2 files are typically 93 files, so power-wise it's probably, because um, we're only running 91 octane here, it's probably going to make like 185 or so. Um, I don't really know exactly, but it should. they typically will dyno anywhere from 180 to 200, depending on all the mods and stuff like that. So um, if we see around that for power, then we know the engine's good and healthy. Um, I'm all, all set up, ready to go. We're almost up to temperature here now, so uh, we're just about to do, like I said, these are just baseline runs, just to kind of see what it makes for power now uh, for when we get to the end of this project. So The car itself has been very, very well maintained. It's basically like it's a brand new car, um, so it's gonna be a treat to work on, that's for sure. We're logging. Let's give it a go. It's pretty close to my guess. It did uh, oh, yeah, 180. 180 <laughs> wheel and uh, 229 torque. You're pretty close to your guess. It's pretty like bang on to Did your I guess. say 180 or 185? I said 180. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Pretty pretty close. Pretty close. I thought yeah. I guessed 185. Yeah, your point went off. So we'll do one more just to back it up, but um, I'll take a look at the logs too, just to uh, make sure nothing's funky going on. But um, this is the way the car's been driven forever, so um, this is the way it is. It's going to be. The power band's going to be completely different when we're finished, like flipped around completely. <laughs> All the torque is at uh, 3200 RPM and then by 6000 RPM it's basically gone away to only 150, so <laughs> it's a pretty, uh, pretty big difference. It'll feel a little different. Yeah. You'll, you'll be different how he drives it, that's for sure, because like I mentioned we're going to do valve train in it. Um, so. I rev that one out to just around seven, and we'll probably go to eighty-two or something like that. Woo yeah. So this thing will be out of horsepower by that if I put the valve train in it now. It's stock turbocharger. So we'll just give it a minute, and um, we'll do another pull. How's the log look? Uh, we've seen a high of uh, pulling eight point three out. Uh, most of it's five to six degrees, actually seven and a half, so anywhere from five to eight. So we'll see what this one does now that the engine's got a little more heat and stuff in it. Um, I suspect it's probably going to pull a little bit more timing. And then boost wise, uh, we saw a peak of 
2450 millibar so that's like uh, 20 pounds I'm just going off the top of my head math wise but it would be uh, no a little more than that maybe 21 pounds a little less timing pull would be ideal it would make a little more power probably uh, but um, it is what it is we're gonna make a lot more power when we're finished Another what? Yeah, watch out for the drum there. Don't be stepping on that. Don't tell me what to do. I don't want you hurt, man. I don't want you hurt. So, giving the car some time to cool down. We're gonna do one more pull just to back it up. I took a look at the logs. This pulling a bit of timing. Nothing too excessive. Um, it seen around 21 pounds of boost on that last pull so I'm logging again just for just for myself really and uh, I got it Clayton and uh, yeah so we're ready to do another pull here drop her down a little bit in the RPM horsepower as I was expecting uh, 175 uh, 223 torque so um, it's pretty much what these should make for power anyway so um, that's gonna be it we're going to uh, do a compression test just before we tear it apart just to make sure the engines nice and healthy and make sure there's nothing wrong with the thing as is clearly by the power there's nothing wrong with it but just something I like to do Okay, so we did an actual third run. I uh, just wanted to check some other stuff before we tear the engine apart. So I think it did uh, 180, 175, and then 170. So um, it's not like in the heat. And I didn't have the fan on for the last run, so that kind of explains a little bit of that. Um, so next up, we're going to pull the engine out of this thing. Start the real fun. And compression test. Yeah, well, I mentioned that. I'm going to do a compression test first. Okay, so we got the GLI warmed up. Uh, I'm going to do a compression test as mentioned before tearing it apart. I'll also scan the car just to make sure there's nothing outstanding before uh, we tear it apart so I'm not chasing my tail on something down the road. Uh, so I'll probably just set the camera up here and uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of rambling while I do compression test here. So let's get to it. So first thing to do is to make sure you unplug all the injectors so that you're not dumping a bunch of fuel into the engine while you're cranking it. Next thing we need to do is take out all the spark plugs so that there's no resistance on the engine while it's cranking over for each compression test. Actually was able to find a 10 mil. Clayton took my long 10 mil home with him the other day, apparently. Lots of oil on that one, so Probably the valve cover gasket is gone and dumping oil down through. There's not any on the plug itself, so it wasn't burning oil, but it's definitely leaking. As was that one. You can see all the oil around here, but you can tell on the actual plug and the porcelain that there's no, it wasn't burning oil at all. It wasn't getting down past, but it was. It wouldn't take too much time before that was going into the cylinder. Clearly needs a new gasket. Same results on this one. This one's actually soaked. 
and just for curiosity on the last one, I can see oil on top of the spark plug before I even pull it out, so it's definitely been leaking for a while. Tell by the sockets all covered in oil and the plugs all covered in oil. It's not a big deal. Um, over time it would get down into the cylinders and would start burning oil which kills octane which kills horsepower so definitely when it gets reassembled we'll make sure to put a new gasket all around on the inside and outside to make sure no oil is leaking down in there so next up what i always do is put a battery charger on it so that uh, every time we're cranking it every cylinder is basically getting the same voltage and there's no variant as the battery gets weaker we want to make sure it's consistent all across the board Next up, throw the compression duster in. Snug it up. Make sure it's at zero. Set it so that it can't be, uh, it's not gonna go flying all over the place. So we're ready to do the compression test now. Next thing, jump in the car, crank it over. Uh, be sure to have your foot on the throttle so that it's uh, wide open throttle basically you want to make sure the throttle body is open while you're doing a compression test so the key things to remember all the plugs out the injectors disconnected and the throttle body has got to be open those are the big points that a lot of people miss when trying to do a compression test oh and the last one is to make sure the engine's warm That's basically where I would expect this to be. Throw it into the next one. Zero out. And write down what the first one is. Okay, so I've gone through, tested each hole multiple times to make sure there was no anomalies. Uh, everything is between 160 and 170. And that's what I would expect. The cylinders aren't that far off from each other. Basically, going to thread the plugs in and then start tearing the car apart. All right, there we go, we got her out. Uh, all in its glory, 1.8 liter, 20 valve. Uh, all in all, everything went pretty good. Um, you can see this thing is actually saturated in undercoating, so it made for uh, a little bit messy of a job but um, nothing out of the ordinary because it's been very well maintained um, all the bolts everything came out very very well actually it's probably one of the cleanest mark fours i've worked on in a long time um, obviously i have a bunch of mess to clean up here uh, so i'm going to get to that next and then uh, the next video this is going to end it for part one the next video is going to be engine tear down um, and then going through the assembly of the turbo kit and everything that we're putting in this thing And then the third video we'll probably do is the, the results video to see what we can get out of this thing. So um, If you have any questions or comments, please ask them below um, Be sure to like and subscribe um, And that's it. See you in the next video All right, so it looks like we have uh, another mark 4180 Here ready to go <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> it's right there. So I decided I would log this. Uh, let me start that over. <clears throat> Everything's stock with the the uh, uh, GoPro stop recording. What are you doing, Clayton? Just uh, getting me out of focus. Thinking how enjoyable it is being six feet away from you at all times. Yeah, you're lying. I'm about six feet away. No, but you're lying about being enjoyable. Oh yeah, you, you right. want to be closer. Yeah, sure. I can't smell you from here, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, so there's a piece of dirt on your lens. It's fine. <laughs>